You're on. Oh. <laughs> God bless everybody. My wife's nervous. <laughs> she doesn't want to talk this morning or this afternoon. But that's okay. We're going to get her to talk this evening. I want to thank all of you for tuning in, whether it's today, right now, live, or, or later on. Come back and, and listen to the to the message. I thank you for joining us. Uh, those of you that are here with us, we have a, a few uh, topics that we're going to be talking about today that have to do with uh, marriage and relationships, uh, not only one with us, but with the Lord, amen? Our relationship with the Lord matters in our marriage. If you think your relationship with God doesn't matter in your marriage, you are, you've been lied, by, lied to by the devil. <coughs> the devil tricked you and, and uh, you believed it. And this is why so many marriages struggle and they fight and they, they battle is because <coughs> they, haven't, they haven't gotten their life in their the relationship right with the Lord. Amen. So God bless you. We're going to open up in prayer. So if you would join with me, please. Father, I just thank you, Lord, that you would be with each and every one of us this evening, yeah. Lord, as we bring this message, Father. I know you've been ministering to my wife and you've been bringing to her uh, spirit these uh, three words that we're going to be talking about tonight, Lord. And I pray that everyone would receive what the Spirit of God is saying, Lord, it's not from me, it's not from my wife, it's from the Lord. It's based on Scripture, it is based on the Bible, and when we allow the Spirit of God to penetrate into our hearts and get into, um, even down into the marrow, Lord, it's, it's easier to hold on to, Lord, so just allow your Spirit to speak to each and every one of us tonight, Father, I thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right, Monica, hit it. Okay. Still trying to wake it up. Nice. All right. So the three words that have, God has been ministering to me oh, is... That's yours. Hmm? That's your water. Yes, that's my water. That's okay. Right. That's you. Thank you. Is the three S's. That's what we need to work out. Three S's three in our messages. S's. In, in ourselves and in our marriages. Beautiful. Three S's. Three S's. Surrender. Surrender. That's a big S. That's a big S. That's a big S. Submit. Submit's an even bigger one than the first one. And serve. And serve. Man, that goes hand in hand, right? I don't think you do one without the other, personally. Yeah. So I looked up the definition of surrender. Of oh. all three S's, surrender. Cease to resistance and submit to their authority. Cease to resist. resist. Stop fighting. Well, in the dictionary it says cease, um, cease resistance to your enemy and submit to their authority. Ooh. But I take out the enemy because I'm not working for that. I'm no. not. I'm not. That's not what the S is about. It's, it's, surrender it, it's about, a description. It's a it's description. description. It's a right. description. But you're not my enemy. No, but in, in, in battle, submit or surrender, surrender. means I give up, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's what we do when we come to the Lord, right? But once again, he's not our enemy, neither is our spouses. They're not our enemy. They are our partners. God is our father. He is our overseer. He's the ruler of our lives. Amen. So he is not our enemy. So I'm submitting, I'm surrendering, seeds resistance, and submitting to his authority, to your authority. To my authority. Amen. Which is God's authority. Hallelujah. Because God ministers to you. Yes, he does. So you can minister. He ministers through you, so you can minister to me. Amen. And that's what it is. It's surrender. So I'm seizing to resistance to submit to God's authority and who he has the head of my household. Amen. Submit. Accept or yield to a superior force of the authority or will of another. Another person. That's submit. Submit. To submit or yield. Yield. What does it mean to yield? 
slow down or just let someone else go. Not my will. Let someone else go. Right? But when we fight. Are you yielding? To give out get 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 our point across. No, you're gonna hear me. I'm gonna I'm gonna say what I gotta say and I don't care if you get mad. That's not yielding. That's the opposite of yielding, right? That's, that's the, iron fisting. That's the opposite of yielding. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sir, Sir, perform duties or services for a, one another, for another, or an organization. Amen. Perf so, perform duties. Perform duties or services. Or services. For another. Um, Your mother. Perform duties. You know, this generation is, is, is lost. Not only have they not had the right model in the household, but they do not know what their duty is as a married couple, what a wife is supposed to do, what a husband is supposed to do. No, because they're too busy being in a competition. Well, yeah. The competition of, I have to make the, mo the most money. I have to make more money. I have to make more money so I don't have to do my duty as a wife in my house. Ooh, running because, in the home. Yes, because I make more money so why should I come home and, and, and perform my, my wifely duties? Ooh. That's this generation's... And I can't so much say all this generation's because if you look back in time, I'm using my life in, as an example of things that was not modeled to me in my home. The things that weren't modeled to me, I didn't have that that um, modeled example of, of a married couple. I didn't have that model couple of a father and a mother. I had my mom. Not saying my dad wasn't there. My dad would come and visit. I had a weekend dad, part-time dad. My dad would come over on weekends and pick us up and hang out with us or spend time with us on the weekends. But then that got cut short because then my dad was gone for a couple some years not by choice it wasn't his choice to but he was out of the picture for for a period of time so I didn't have that model in the house and we didn't even open up a scripture so let's do that okay well we were done each each one of these topics has scriptures each one of these topics has each scriptures. one of these topics has a scripture but we were talking about service we were, we, we were talking we talked about surrender we talked about submit and now we're talking about and we're service. talking about the definition of service mm -hmm. of performing service. duties right and, and this generation of young men and women who are in a relationship maybe they don't even this I don't need some piece of paper to tell me that I'm your man they don't get it they don't they don't want it right? And if they don't, they don't, they don't want to, they don't want the piece of paper. What makes you think they're gonna do the cooking and the cleaning and the ironing? We all seen that I throwing don't know out the trash. I don't know if it's a TikTok or Facebook page where it's like, um, oh, you, you want you want the the what was it the wife position? That this is what the the young lady was telling the, the man. Oh, you, you're asking for the that benefit when I don't have it. That I ha you haven't made the commitment to make me, give me that promotion, so why do I need to do that service for you? Why do I need to cook? Why do I need to clean? I didn't get promoted. I'm still the girlfriend. Well, here, here, here's the thing, right? If, if you're not already <coughs> doing it because it's part of who you are, you can't just flip a switch and turn it on overnight. Mm -hmm. It don't work that way. If you did not grow up cleaning, cooking, straightening up, washing dishes, what makes you think that a ring is going to make you do it like that overnight? <laughs> it's not part of your character. It's not part of what you are or what you do. What do you got? You know, brother, uh, I'm, I'm doing a, a class right now with my counselor and we're healthy relationships and a lot of it's got to do with your upbringing and what you were taught when 
he was coming up. Oh my. The mother and father, per se. I had a mother and father. Yeah, but uh, that most of us, that's why relationships are breaking up. That's why uh, the men are cheating or the women are cheating or, you know, all this stuff. I, I just finished a book on it that I have to, to bring back. But uh, a lot of that has got to do with your upbringing. You, you weren't taught that. Oh, you were taught the, the, the bad, just like I taught my children, all the bad stuff. Example. Yeah, well, see, that's, 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 I can, I can, there's two different types of, of, you're in the fork in the road. Are you going to go to the left or to the right? We can let that take root. Like I said, I didn't have my dad in the house, not by choice. Um, my mom, she was a single mom raising two girls working to two to three jobs just to keep the house. It was just to keep the house. Didn't have enough sometimes to put food on the table, but we had to survive. Now, am I gonna allow that to define me who I am today? Yes, in the beginning, it was tough because I didn't know how to cook. Uh, clean, yeah, we did clean. It was, it was more of a demand thing than it was a uh, it was a, yes the chore but it wasn't a, a so much of a the reason why I guess you I want to say the reason why we have to do this there was never no the reason why we got to clean so we can have a clean house so we could do this I remember there would be times maybe during the springtime spring cleaning we all know about the spring cleaning it would be my mom my aunt my two cousins and me and my sister scrubbing walls Scrubbing floors, scrubbing the everything, everything, everything. And that happened like once or twice a year. That was it. It wasn't an everyday thing. No, because why? my mom was working just to make sure we didn't lose the house. My mom was, was and when she wasn't working, yeah, she was being a, a woman. And I'm not saying a woman of the night. She was being a single mom, mom, single woman. When you're not married and, and you... I work two, three jobs. I have my girls at home. It's my time now. So she went out dancing with my grandma. We were just talking about this earlier today. I remember her and my grandma going out to Tropicana when there used to be a club over there. I remember because I remember going there. I remember going there. Um, I forget for what reason, but we went over there and I remember times where my mom and then my mom and my grandma would go over there to go dancing. That's what they enjoyed doing. I remember a time when my neighbors and a couple of her friends came to pick up my mom so they could go out clubbing. And it was just me and my sister. So we didn't have that that model of why you have to cook, why you have to clean, or anything like that. So the, the fork, fork in the, the road. road. Yes, the fork so the I could have done the same thing she did and just the single mom life. And then blamed it on that and how that deep that void or go to the right and no I want something different from my family I want something different when I and I, I, I know I've talked about this to him if, if people were to tell us 10 years or 30 something years ago 33 years ago you guys are gonna be married and have four kids and blah blah, blah I would look and laugh because that wasn't my my vision that wasn't what I was seeking I was just seeking to have a good time but I ended up with a, a beautiful handsome husband with a beautiful family that taught me so much of no because I knew when I have my sons when I have my children when I get married and if I get married I do not want my family to grow in that single home I do not want to have a part-time dad for my kids I was determined because I know how hurt it was for me as well as I know how hard it was for me not to have my mom there, not to have my dad there, not to have that male figure there and to have that, let me find the void. Let me, let me see what's out there so I can fill the void. And it wasn't just a void of missing my dad, but the void of being taught by my mom. It's not, it wasn't one, it was just two. So that's why it's now I'm not going to allow my past being raised and not having that model define 
my family. I'm not going to let it cripple me. I'm not. And neither should you. Yes, I'm not saying it don't hurt. It hurts. It hurts. Because when young mom, as, as young women, we need our moms. We need our moms. All women need their moms. Everybody needs their moms. We all need our moms. But me, as becoming a mom, I needed my mom. I needed my mom. I wanted my mom. But then for what? What did she teach me when I was growing up? Yes, I'm not saying my mom wasn't ever there for me. She was there for me. She helped me. She did things for me. Me and my sister were talking about this. And I was like, man, when she first, Alex was first sick and to give him medicine. And she plugged his nose. And I nearly flipped out. And, You're killing my child. Because she plugged his nose so he could swallow the medicine. And she's like, he's not going to stop breathing, Monica. And, I mean, stuff like that we can laugh about now. And those are the things I do remember of my mom teaching me that the, and my grandma. But at the same time, it was when hard, times were hard, when times were difficult, when times of, I need my mom not to give, not, not to be my mom, but to be that person to help me, to be there for me. But she wasn't because of other reasons. She wasn't there, not because she didn't want to be there, but she, my sister had her kids. So she was focused over there with my sister and her kids, which is, I guess, okay, but I was still hurting. So I was determined not to live that life. I was yeah. determined not to have that, to break that generational curse of that brokenness, of that hurt, of that empty voidness. That's different. That's another uh, episode. We, we, we can dig into that. Uh, on another on another time because everybody has trauma right I grew up with a father that was mm. right Some, in, in, in my eyes he was he was rough in my eyes too. right but I could listen to someone else's story and be like well man you, you probably had a little worse than me but I was the one that was going through it that's for another time. Well, that's part of the surrendering part of surrendering our, our past. Once again, digging deep, digging deep, digging deep to that that void. What is that void that is down deep down inside of me that has me with my walls, with my walls, with my walls, with my walls? I mean, we could go high and we could go width and, and deep of our walls. But in order to break that generational curse, in order to rid of that, we had to dig deep. Yes, I had to dig deep of, of not having my mom. Once again, I'm not saying it didn't hurt, but I'm over it. Because now I'm not sitting here crying over spilt milk. I cleaned up the milk and I'm moving on. I'm wiping it up. Lord, get rid of this hurt of not having my mom. But let me, because the more I focus on that, how am I focusing on my kids? How am I focusing on my marriage? How am I focusing on God? How am I surrendering to God if my focus is on constantly not having my mom, not having my mom, not having my dad, not having my dad? If that focus is constantly there, how am I surrendering and keeping my eyes on God? I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm focused on that hurt. It's, it's, it's that boulder in the middle of the creek that's not letting the water flow through. And I'm not going to do that. Because I want God to use me. I want to be used by, by God. I desire, I hunger to be used by God. Because why there's other women out there and other ladies. There's my daughter-in-laws that are out there. I'm not, maybe one of them that hurt because they don't have, she don't have a mom. But I... And I've, I've told her, I'm not your mom, and I'm not here to replace your mom, but I'm here if you need me. I'm here if you need me. When you need me, and when you're, hey, I'm, I'm, there's my, there's the shoulders, there's my arms. I'll hug and, and allow you to cry on my shoulders anytime you need. And same thing with both, I said, both my girls, all my girls, I'm like that. You just, if you need me, I'm here, I'm here. I'm not replacing your mom, but I'm here. I know my mother-in-law did not replace my mom, but I knew. And I know she's there for me whenever I need her. Whenever I need her, she was there. She's the one that taught me how to cook. 
She's the one that taught me how to clean. She's the one that taught me how to be a mom. She's the one that taught me how to surrender to God. She's the one that introduced me to people who can introduce me to Jesus. If it hadn't been for her, I don't know where I'd be at today. I know I wouldn't be sitting here, that's for sure, but I'm here today because of a woman that introduced me to a church, to family, to friends, to church family that introduced me to Jesus. And I'm grateful for that. So that took my focus off that void. She wasn't there to replace my mom, but she was there to help me, to guide me. That was the surrender of releasing that. Now that I surrendered that hurt, that pain, that, I'm not saying there's not others, but there's part of it that's yeah, I, surrendered. I, I, uh, I could say the same, I, but in a different fashion, because mm -hmm. I, I had a dad, I never had a mom. She passed when I was real young. I didn't get no nurturing, no love as a mother would do, but I got a lot of stern from my father, and that's why I was so rough with my boys. That's what my father taught me, you know. But uh, I can see what you're saying because I never did get any love, so I I I, I knew nothing about love. My love was all the wrong kind of love, you know. It was love to fill a void. Like you said, wrong kind of love. Because we want to feel that emptiness. We want to feel that void. We want to, to, because we don't want to feel that emptiness inside. We don't. I mean, I, like, like I, I know we said in the past, probably in January, February, throughout all these years, all these years of us being together, not realizing we were in the same boat. Didn't have the same lifestyle. <clears throat> he had a family that parents are together. I came from a family that I didn't have both my parents. But when we dug deep, that's when we came to realize that, you know what, all this fog that was in between us, that God blew away, then we realized we were in the same boat because there was things that we talked about in December. And it was like, wow, we were both hurting. And instead of trying to fan the fog away, to see that we were standing right next to each other in the same boat of same hurt from our past that it's it's not realizing you two could be standing in the same boat but because this canoe is super long and you got fog that you guys aren't allowing for you guys to, to move the fog to get closer to realize what your past was so was his but in a different version. Yeah, so there's. I had my mom. I had my mom and dad, but when my dad left my mom, I was still early 18, 17, 18 years old when my dad left my mom. <clears throat> you know, and there's a lot of hurt there too because, like, I seen him one time. I had went to the bar and he started talking to me about the other lady, and I, oh God, she told me. I went off on him, and my brother kept telling me, shut up. I said, no, shut up, I don't care. You know, I just went off on him, you know? And when he died, my brother wanted me to go to the funeral, and, and I said, no. And I, I never will when he passed away. I mean, I really, I guess because he hurt my mom so much, and I seen what she went through, you know, she almost had a nervous breakdown. That was her first love, her first boyfriend, you know, she never had anybody else or anything. And I just seen how much hurt he did to her. It didn't bother me when he died. It really didn't. I don't, maybe, Are you maybe, sure? That's all I'm just going to say. Sure? Maybe, maybe, you know, Are it's you that sure? deep, down, deep down inside, but... I don't feel like it. You know? Once you dig deep and start getting rid of the junk that's in that ch that that chest, once you dig deep and start emptying out and cleaning out, remodeling the home, then you're going to realize it does hurt. It does hurt. It does hurt because you're angry at your dad for leaving your mom, mm -hmm. knowing how it hurt her, knowing you've seen the result, he didn't see the result, 
So it hurted you to see your mom break down. It hurted your mom to to pretty much kind of lose it type yeah, of thing. Right. It hurted you. But we tend to bury those things. Not, not let's just throw junk on top of it. Because I don't want to deal with it. But if you don't deal with it, who's it affecting? So let's get into the scripture that has to do with surrender, right? We're talking about surrender, submit, and serve. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, we're going to be reading here 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. This is what it says. It's a well-known scripture. But we're talking about surrender. What does surrender mean? Surrender, surrender. Verse 17, chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians says, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, now that includes women, if any women be in Christ, he or she is a new creation. The old things pass away, and behold, new things have come. So my version says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. So. <laughs> this new creation that the word of God is talking about, if we're in Christ, all those old things, they're supposed to be gone. Because if I don't let go of all that old stuff, me and this woman that I asked to be my wife, we're never going to make it. Never. We're never going to make it. Because I can't forgive my dad for what he did. I can't forgive my mom for what she did. I can't forgive my... Forgive my brother or my sister or my cousins. They used to beat me up, you know, on my own birthday. They, they tortured me. If I cannot get rid of any of that stuff and surrender to the Lord and allow this scripture, the old person is gone and there's a new creation. If I can't allow that to happen, this right here is never going to work. How can I surrender to her if I haven't surrendered anything else in my life. There's other stuff that I have buried and I have locked away. There's other stuff that I have deep down inside that I don't want to tell nobody about, right? Maybe somebody touched me when I was a kid and I'm a man. I'm not supposed to talk about stuff like that. But if I don't let, let that come out, I can never allow her to get close to me. That's there's not, a wall there. There's, not, there's no vulnerability. There. There's no vulnerability. There's no never. vulnerability. Not only that... We have to remember when we surrender to Christ, he's not anybody. He's not, some, yes, he's somebody, but he's not nobody and he's not just anybody. He's not everybody. He is the one and only ruler of our life. Supposed to be. Supposed to be. I know for my life, I'm speaking on me. For my life, he's the one and only Adonai, ruler of my life. Why am I not going to, it's not like he hasn't seen it. He's, my, my life is in his book. What everything I went through from the time I was born up until this day is all in his book. He knows everything I've been through. He knows everything I've done. He knows everything that I've said and going to say. He knows it all. Why am I not going to want to surrender to him? For what purpose? Because sh I can't. I, I got to keep that in the closet. Guess what? Where is he at? He's in that closet just as well as he's right here in this room. So in my Bible. This scripture, there's topics that go along with it. And it says, character transformation. That's what surrender is. That's what this scripture is about. Character transformation. In order for there to be surrender, there has to be character transformation. The old person cannot come into the new life. It doesn't work. Right? Maybe you traded a pack of cigarettes now for... Uh, a, a, a package of Oreos It's the same old person mm. We still got habits We still got hang ups 
there's still things in our lives that we do need to surrender and and that you said that if you did bring what our son told you and and we do got to get out of that we do have to get i, I remember outside of you went from being stuck in this garage to now you're stuck in another garage basically meaning this place because that's what he did once he he gave his once my husband gave his life to christ and okay I'm, i start serving start going to church 20 something years ago about he um he was busy doing the church thing i'm not saying that's wrong but we never fixed what should have been fixed that we didn't remodel that and as our children they see that like in okay you traded one habit to another habit where's our time where's our time we 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 don't we forget that part of not okay I, I, i'm clean i'm sober i'm not drinking i'm not smoking i'm not using I'm not doing bad things. I'm not going to the club. I'm not hanging out with this person, that person. I'm in church. I'm doing good. I'm doing everything that's right for the, for God. I, I'm I'm keeping myself busy in the house of God by doing everything from the inside out or from the outside in that we don't fix what's here. If if, if I wouldn't have dug deep and surrendered everything and and okay started opening up those closet doors cleaning out our home like what it says we wouldn't be here today wouldn't we we would not be here today and i can say that because i know it we'd still have that 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 pee of hurt so my son our sons our daughters they know us they know when we're pretending mm-hmm. they know when we're faking it they know us they know us when our lives resemble what they used to resemble before you started going to that building over there they call it church your life's the same way you still yell the same way you still cuss the same way you still treat people the same way there is no difference there's no character transformation and it goes a little bit deeper when our children know about God when our children know oh, yeah. Jesus, when our children has been sitting here in these pews, they know they're just faking it to make it. That's not really them. We don't have to cuss. We don't have to say bad things. We don't have to complain. We don't have to say anything. But it's in our actions that we do towards each other that they're going to say, they're just playing church. That's all they're doing. They're just playing church because why, once again, our children have sat there, they've heard the word. They know the word. They know of the messages that that's been spoken up here, not only by their grandmother, but by their grandfather and everybody else that they've seen. And how are you going to tell me you guys are all about church and all about Jesus when you guys could show, I could see it. I see it in you guys. I see it in your actions. Once again, actions speak louder than words. He's, Tommy says it all the time. Actions speak louder than words. How can I say I love you when I'm not showing it? Yeah. Well, we can't even sit in the same room. When we can't even talk to each other, when we can't even just, you know, joke with each other. Now we can joke with each other and not take it upsetly. I I won't get offended about that or he won't get offended about that. You know, we can laugh with each other and at each other and not be in a torturous type of way. And our kids will see that. They're going to, I'd rather than see our actions and how we are with each other than speak the words. Let them see our actions. Let them hear us, whether it's through YouTube, Facebook, whatever. Let them hear that. If they're not going to hear it from us face-to-face, then let them hear it on the Word. Let them hear it on Facebook. Let them hear it on YouTube. Let them hear it on Instagram. Let them hear it by word of mouth from somebody else. But not only let them hear it, then they're going to want to come around and say, let's see how it really is. I'm going to drop by one day and be like, what's up? And see how they really are, where they really are. Are they really together? I think it was funny because last Sunday I went to the mall with my, my daughter, my sister, my daughter, because we went to go play with kitties, and I saw my son's best friend. I saw a boy's best friend and another friend of his. And we're just like, what? Hey, what's up? And the first thing he asked is, who's Mr. Molina? Like, surprise, 
I'm there without <laughs> without him because everybody is so used to us seeing us. If they don't, if they see me, they know he's not far from me. If they see him, they know I'm not far from him. The only days we're not together is on Fridays from, from 8 to whatever time because I'm at work and he's busy doing other things. But other than that, Monday through Friday, Sunday through Sunday, we're with each other all the time. All the time. Surrender. We have to surrender to the authority of Christ in our lives. We have to. We have to surrender to the fact that Christ is now going to change some things about our lives because they're not going to work for where he's taking us. Mm -hmm. We're trying so hard to hold on to. We're trying so hard to hold on to this identity that we built up in the past. If you grab a, gr a group of your friends that knew you before the Lord, before you accepted the Lord, and you ask them, tell me five things about Sister Rita. How would they describe you? And <laughs> would those things still be would those things still be valid today? Right? And, and, and we can each do this. We can you can do this at home if you want. Think about the way you used to act. Think about the way you used to. You were ready to cut somebody down. You were ready to tell that lady in the line to shut her child up. Even though it wasn't even your child. Does that type of behavior still describe us today? Because that's not surrendering to Christ. Mm -hmm. We haven't surrendered. Right? We need to surrender our lives. There's a man by the name of Peter. Okay? Jesus said, do you love me, Peter? Lord, you know I do. Do you love me? He asked him again. Lord, you know I do. Peter, do you love me? Right? Feed my sheep. Work. Get up. Do something. Stop busying yourself with stuff that doesn't concern the, the kingdom of God mm. and do something that, that benefits the kingdom of God, that benefits your eternal life. Because if you cannot do something that benefits your eternal life, do you have an eternal life? Do we? Mm -hmm. Do we have an eternal life? If we haven't been storing up treasures in heaven, is there anything waiting for us up there? Mm -hmm. Is there? So Peter, this man, that said, Lord, I love you. What happened when Jesus got arrested and crucified? What happened? He said, hey, you look like one of those guys who used to hang out with that guy named Jesus. He goes, no, not me. Yeah, you know what? As a matter of fact, you do. You kind of talk like them. He started to cuss and swear. The old character came out of this man. This is in the book of Matthew. Matthew 26, um, uh, 74 talks about how Peter was very upset and cursing the Bible says but then you go to the book of Acts chapter 5 verse 15 and it says that as he walked down the street the shadow of this man the same man that was cursing the shadow of this man was healing people was there a, char a character transformation Mm-hmm. Was there a was there a change in that person's life? Mm -hmm. Yes, there was. Surrender. The surrender one to another to the Lord. She says, I surrender to you because you surrender to God. If your spouse has surrendered to the Lord, then yes, we need to surrender to our spouse. What happens if your your partner says, "I know you"? But she has To be honest, then it hasn't done. She hasn't dug deep to rid of that. I know him. I know him, and I know. Really? Yes, really. 
I know him. I know the ups, the downs. I know the backwards, the forwards. I know I've heard the lies. I know all that. But that's not him. That's what he used to be. Oh, yeah. I was good at lying. That's what he used to be. But he is no longer that. And I'm no longer holding. Once again, I surrendered everything to God. Not only my childhood past. Not only my adolescent past. Not only my young adult mother past. But the young marriage young people that got married past the hurt of him mm -hmm. leaving and not coming home for days and weeks and leaving me at home with three to four kids but i was thinking about you that's no i can't say that but come on baby you're on church all right the song no, i, I right was now. thinking about you I told so you. i can't i cannot i cannot I, I cannot hold on to that I've, i surrendered everything everything when i say i surrendered everything like i said not the childhood not not just all that mother parent mother issue past father issue past but the past of what we've been through i surrendered all that lord take it because i don't want it and i don't want to deal with it anymore because i don't like that feeling yes sir it is not fair for one individual in the relationship to be. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not fair. It's not fair. It's not fair for me to be the Holy Ghost police on her life. It's not fair. I'm not the Holy Ghost police. And she's not the Holy Ghost police to tell me that I'm still this way or I'm still that way or I failed over here or I failed over there. That's not right. That's not what God wants. How is that what we just read? How is that what Second Corinthians five seventeen? Therefore, anyone, anyone who is in Christ, I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. He's in Christ. You're in Christ. You're in Christ. We're all in Christ. That's it. Is a new creation. The old is past. Yeah. Not just my old. His old. So okay. I'm not gonna be that Holy Ghost police and be like, well, you did this and you did that. And then be, the be that be I'm that person to, for him to say, oh, I'm going to go to the store and get some milk. Um, sweetie, I don't drink milk for one. And okay, go. And timing him. From the time he leaves the house, it's going to take him an hour because the store is just 10 minutes away, 5 minutes away. So I'm going to let him go to the store, 5 minutes away, 5 minutes to be in the store to grab the milk that I can't drink and then bring it back. That I have not, I'm not, I'm still in the old. Character transformation. If if there was no trust in the relationship before we started serving the Lord, and we brought that back, we brought that in, right? Mm -hmm. The jealousy, the the whatever you want to call it. I don't even know what to call it, right? That's pretty much what it is. Jealousy. Say what it is. It's jealousy. There's nothing else. There's untrustworthy. Uh, there's untrust and there's jealousy right there. But how can I... When somebody is jealous, in my opinion, my eyes, where I see, if I'm jealous of him, there ain't no trust there, there ain't nothing there, I'm jealous of what? Uh, because of who he is and how God created him to be and how he could go to Safeway and talk to the lady about uh, that's making his sandwich, go to Goodwill and talk to the lady there, talk to him. There's, there's women that are hurting that think all men are a certain way, but when they hear this man talk, they're just like, Wait, you, your wife is pretty lucky. And it's not like he's talking to them and flirt with them. Yes, he talks about me, and I'm not saying that to be conceited, but I know my husband. Vice versa. I don't talk to a lot of people. I don't know if y'all know that. When I'm out there, I just blinders on. Let me just see where I'm going. And not because I don't want to talk to many, but when the opportunity comes up for somebody to talk to me, whether it's opposite sex or the same sex, I'm going to talk to them. And I'm going to allow and let them know, oh, yeah, that's how my husband says that about me, too. Blah, blah, blah. Or, you know what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, that's what my husband says about me, too. And they just laugh or they just smile. Okay. Okay. Character transformation, surrender. Okay. Let, let, let's move. We, we spent 45 minutes on, on one word so far. Mm -hmm. let's, mm -hmm. let's, let's get to submit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Submit. Ephesians right? 521. Accept or yield to a superior force or the authority. Who's the authority, right? Or will of another person. We submit to the authority of Christ. Right. 
right? Mm -hmm. We submit to the authority of Christ. So women, submit to your husbands. Why? Because husbands, you're supposed to treat your wife and love your wife like Christ loves the church. Right? That's what we're supposed to do. Ephesians 5.21. Read it. Submit to one another. Uh oh Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. My so it's not just my. the wives. Yes, we are to submit to our husbands, but it's for both husband and wives to submit to one another. Yes. To submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Because I love the Lord. I'm going to bite my tongue. Ooh. Yes. Is that hard? Because I love the Lord, I'm not going to say it, even though I'm used to saying it. Because I love the Lord, and I know you're an unfinished product, and God is still working with both of us, I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. How about that? Well, that, well that's what it is, is because God put us together to heal each other, not to fix each other. Right. I am to be here for you to heal you from your hurt. You were here and, and to allow you to speak, to allow you to say, to allow you to be vulnerable and cry if you need to. To lay your head on my lap Ooh. when you need to. Sounds like a message I heard. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Safe. As, well, as long as I'm to do the same thing. To submit to him and rest in him. Be vulnerable to him. Be comfortable. And not only comfortable, but safe. With him, we need to make each other safe, and we don't do that because now, not just now generations. I'm not going to just say now generations, but some generations, past, now, then, whatever. It's a competition. Then what's the point of getting married? What was the point of getting married if all I'm doing is going to compete against him? I can be single and do that, but God has us together to heal each other, to mend each other. You know, women women see intimacy and love in one way, and men see intimacy and love in a different way. And until I understand what she thinks about love, and until she understands the way I feel about love, right? We're not going to get anywhere. Mm -hmm. I was raised one way, she was raised another way. I was raised with two... God-fearing parents in the home, right? Mm -hmm. Even though sometimes they were ready to. Uh, we're all we're all common. We're all we're, we're all human, right? And not physically. My my parents and, and, and my, my my father was very good with his voice. He was loud, right? And my mom too. She has a very good voice too, right? But this young lady grew up in a totally different way. But she doesn't get it. She doesn't understand what I know because she didn't grow up like me. And I don't understand what she knows because I didn't grow up in a house full of women. I grew up in a house full of men. You know that he grew up a certain way without a mother and he probably doesn't know how to treat women. And he knows that you have some issues with men. You guys know that with each other. You're still holding against your, your father. You're still angry and upset. She's still angry and upset with her mother. I might still be angry and upset with things that my father did or my mother did. Right? But I gotta let them go. Otherwise, I'm going to hold on to it and harbor it, and it's going to come out, and our relationship's never going to go nowhere. But we got to learn to submit to one another. Mm -hmm. We have to learn to submit, and we have to learn to be able to work these things out. And if I know something about my partner, and I use it to punish them, and to poke them, and to make them mad, I'm wrong. That's not love. For he that knows to do good and doesn't do it, right? Sin, you're going to not get into heaven because you want to get him back with some words. You're going to not get into heaven because you want to poke at the bear. Really. I'm going to not get into heaven because 
I just want her to do it my way? Come on. That's no yielding. There's no surrender there. There's no surrender at all. Serving the Lord is surrendering. Submitting but to one another. Submitting. Submitting to one another is it's in a way of what's that? When you submit to God, when you see him surrendering to God and submitting to God, it's gonna make it easy. It makes it easier for us when I see him surrendering, submitting to God, and hear him hearing the voice of God and I his spirit's gonna talk to my spirit. I'm gonna feel it. So it's gonna be okay, easier for me to submit to my own partner. When he feels the same way, it's going to be easier for him to submit and hear what God is talking to him through me about. It works both ways. It's not just a God speaks to him and speaks to me and, and he tells me and that's it. No, God talks to both of us. God talks to both of you guys. But both of you guys want to have this and you want to have this. Blinders. Blinders. With the wall this thick and the wall that high and not be able to heal each other. Not fix each other. Heal each other. Yeah. Be there for each other. Surrender to each other. Surrender to God with each other. I'm going to admit. I'm going to admit. It was last weekend or the weekend before, last oh. Sunday or the, the Sunday before. Oh, I saw the most beautiful thing that just seriously touched my heart. Oh. It touched my heart and I just Lord, you know. That's all I got to say. Lord, hold them. When I saw two couple right there right there together not one over there and the other one over here no two of them both you all together right there kneeling and praying that blessed my heart to see that and to pray and ask God to be with you guys not make this a one-time deal, but make this an every Sunday deal. That it's gonna make it a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday deal. So, really quick with submit, okay? When we submit, we're giving up ourselves, right? We're committing ourselves to the Lord. We're committing ourselves to our spouses. Um, um, there's a scripture in the book of Hebrews, chapter thirteen, verse seven. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 7 this is what it says remember those who led you do you remember those who led you do you remember those that talked to you about Jesus do you remember those that were an example to you as you were a baby Christian do you remember who spoke the word of God to you and consider the result of their conduct what type of individual was it that led you to the Lord how did they conduct themselves? What did they do? It says imitate their faith. Submit to, to the work of the Lord. Submit to what God is doing in our lives. And repeat the actions of those that inspired you to come to the Lord. Why are we here serving the Lord? For Tuesday for Tuesday uh, free food? Is that why we're serving the Lord? Or maybe for a free backpack in August. Maybe that's why we're serving the Lord. Some binder paper, a couple of pencils and an eraser. Why are we serving the Lord? Why are we serving the Lord? Submit to the work of the Lord. Intimidate. Intimidate. In <laughs> It says, imitate their faith. Imitate what they did. Submit to what God is doing in your life so that it resembles those that brought you to the Lord. How is it going to resemble what brought you to the Lord? Im imitate. We're, we, as believers, imitate and show who Jesus was, what he was about, what his ministry was about. Love. Love. He was a man of love. He was and he loved everybody. Everybody. No matter what we did, no matter what they did. He loved the prostitute. He loved the broken 
women. He loved the broken men. He loved the widows. He loved the orphans. He loved the drunkens, the drunkers. drunkers. He loved the addict, addictors, whatever you want to call them. He loved them all. All. He didn't look at them and say, no, nope, can't love you because you got an issue about trust. You have a jealousy issue. You have a mother issue. You have a father issue. Mm -hmm. You have this issue. You have an addiction, a drug addiction. You have an alcohol addiction. You have this. You have a wall that you don't want to get rid of. You have this that you don't want to remodel your house because your way is your way and that's it. You're stuck in that stagnant water. You're not standing in it. You're sitting and lounging in the climate. On the in that stagnant water, comfortable. So I'm not gonna love you. No, he loved us, and he still to this day loves us every day. He wakes us up. I think about True. the thing that he has done for us, our sins, our sins before we even committed them. He took that and he nailed it to the cross yes, with him. <laughs> nailed to the cross, and what did he do? Washed us of our sins before we were even born. That at times blows my mind of wow I wasn't even born yet and you gave up your life for me you gave up your life for me for 33 years you did not sin at all and you had every right to everybody was doing it back then the Jews, the Gentiles the everyone you could think of everybody that's in this Bible sinned and for 33 years this man was sinless sinless and we can't go 33 seconds without sinning. When? 33 minutes without sinning. 33 days without sinning. We can't even do that. We sin when we think wrong of our partner. We sin when we look at somebody and think wrong. That's we good. sin, what did you say right now? When I know what I'm doing, what is right, and I don't do it, and I poke the bear, I'm yeah. sinning. So, yeah, we sin. We cannot go 33 seconds without sinning. So... Romans chapter 6 verse 13. Very well known verse. It says. Do not go on presenting the members of your body to sin. Don't do it no more. Don't do it no more. Instruments of unrighteousness. So what are they talking about? Flipping the middle finger? Is that? Is that? Is that? Yeah, Romans what? Romans chapter 6 verse 13. Given some of the bird. Is that is that using your body as an instrument of, uh, of un unrighteousness? Yes. Is that a sin? Sin. Is that a sin to roll your eyes at somebody when they're telling you something you know is right, and you're like, here they go with their self righteous self again, right? Are we presenting our 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 body as an unrighteous uh, uh, instrument? Or maybe when we tell people things that we know is going to make them mad, are we using our body as instruments of unrighteousness? It says, but present yourselves to God as those alive from the dead. That means that when we do that other stuff, <laughs> we're dead. We're not alive. You're not filled with the Holy Spirit. The, the Holy Spirit gives life. But when we're doing that other stuff and we're we're picking and poking and talking and cussing and doing these things that shouldn't be done, we are dead. Your when it says, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Present yourself to God as those alive from the dead. And your members as instruments of righteousness to God. We need to be uplifting to each other that submit. We need to pour into each other that submit. We need to look the other way when we know our partner's having a bad day that submit. We need to not be so quick, but we've done it for so long. It's part of that character we were talking about. Character transformation. That old character's still there. That's why the words fly out so fast. That character's still there. That's why I poke it at you and I tell you that you need to stop doing this or you need to stop doing that. That old character's still there. Right? It's still there. There's no character transformation. 
You look like one of those people that walk around with Jesus and go to church and pass out food, but the words coming out of your mouth don't sound like the people that go to that church. The way you're treating your husband don't look like the people that, that go to that church. The way you're talking to your wife don't look like the people that go to that church. I know that lady. She has silver hair. Sometimes it's blonde, I think. <laughs> you don't look like her. You're not acting like her. The words coming out of your mouth don't represent that woman. How about that? Those actions, those things, that's not submitting to the will of God. We got one more word. Serve. So surrender, submit, and serve. How hard is it to serve one another? Not at all. It's, it not, it's not hard when you surrender and submit it. Okay. It's not hard. It's not hard for me to serve you wholeheartedly knowing I'm serving you with love, with compassion with kindness it's not hard it should not be hard for anybody me personally it's not hard it's not hard at all because when I'm serving him I'm serving God's son I'm serving who God put in my path to be my partner to be there for me to be my ride or die to be my my power couple partner that's who I'm serving for me it's deeper than that okay go ahead God to... didn't tell you to marry him and God didn't tell you to marry her you asked for it now why God blessed us with the union now why do we don't want it how are you going to pray for a house and not clean it that's how you guys say it. How we, uh, we're praying for our home, a house. We're praying for a house to make a home. God's going to bless us with it, but he ain't going to want to cut the grass, and I don't want to clean. Because, well, it's a big house. But it's what I've been praying for. It's what you wanted. It's what I've been asking God for. It's what I've been praying for. I know what I ask God for. Lord, give me a house so my family can come over, stay the night, hang out. Be free. Let their hair down. Kick off their shoes. I love it when I see my grandsons, my grandson and, and my grandkids come over and the first thing they do, and then I laugh because when I see Moses do this, comes into grandma's house and he just takes off his shoes. First thing he does. And then I look and there's dad kicking off his shoes. Ooh. And I'm like, it makes my heart happy. But what is that? Let's go back. What is that? What do they feel? Love. What do they feel that they can do that? Love and comfortable. Ooh. Peace. But we should have we should have that in our marriage. Yes. Rita. Right? You know what the word is, really? S A F E. That's what they feel. <laughs> yes. Yes. If my partner does not feel safe, something's wrong. If my partner could not talk to me, express themselves to me, sit next to me, something is wrong, Sister Rita, Brother Dan, Sister Monica, Pastor Madeline. Oh, her partner went to heaven. <laughs> Safe. Why did Samson? Why did Samson go with the light? Why? She gave him a place to lay his head. If your partner can't lay his head in your lap, I don't know what's going on. Not safe. Not safe. Our children, if they don't feel ah, that they can kick off their shoes, something is wrong in the home. Right? And that's the home I pray for. So that my kids and our pets. Yes, I want pets. Well, I want my dogs. I want my cats. We need to cat. talk about that. And we already did. Don't worry. You've already told me right there. Mary Jane's already giving you an apple. But those things is what I want is to have my kids come and just the comfortability of just kicking off. I mean, to some people, it's like, really? You, you get happy. Your heart gets happy when you see your kids take off your shoes. 
Yes, I do. I do. It makes me feel good. It makes my heart smile because once again, it's safe. Yeah. It's their safe place. Their homes, our homes should be their safe place, our safe place. That's what it should be. And they, it's safe when we surrender, when we submit, and when we're serving. It's safe because I'm not going to serve them with a plate of poison. I'm not. I'm going to serve them love. I hope not. Mm -hmm. I'm vulnerable. I'm going to eat what you put in that plate. Well, when I am. Right? If it's Drano. If it's Drano, I'm going to sure that insurance is, life insurance is good. I don't <laughs> got life insurance. I don't have life insurance for that reason. So that's why I'm going to do it. So, service. Let's go to the Old Testament. First Chronicles. First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9. Let's go. Let's go to the Old Testament, right? Mm -hmm. That, that eight, eye eight, for nine. an eye, tooth for a tooth, right? You run over my dog, I get to kill yours. Mm -hmm. Eye for an eye. Your son hurt my daughter, so I get to hurt your son. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. You want to play with God? The ground's going to open up and swallow you. That's the Old Testament. Aren't we, aren't we glad we don't live in the Old Testament? Mm -hmm. Right? God would have put up with absolutely zero. Of, I mean, some people still live like that. But they don't, Sister Rita. 28, 9. They don't live like that. No, because if, 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 if they break one rule, they broke them out. I don't mean people in Christ. I mean, no, I, I know, I know like exactly it, what you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, no, they yeah. live a form of the Old Testament. They can't do the Old Testament. And there's a reason why they couldn't do it all. Because it wasn't made to do. The rules weren't set there so you can keep them. The rules were there to show you that you cannot keep them and you need to talk to God and ask Him for help. That's why the rules were there. But some people think, well, as long as nobody knows my real life and I can put on a clean shirt, they're going to think I'm okay. Whatever, however I'm living in my house is in my house. As soon as I walk out the door, right. I'm going to put on that suit. And, and I'm living the Old Testament. That's what the Pharisees did. That's what the Sadducees did. They portrayed this, this, this act, this role, this, this um, facade facade of, of, of we're holier than thou. We read the Bible all day long. We pray. We give of our life. We give of our money. No. First Chronicles 28, 9. Here we are here. David is addressing about the temple in this chapter. But this is what verse 9 says. As for you, he says, my son, Salomon, know the God of your father. He's saying, no, no me. He's, he saw the example. He saw David. He saw his father and everything his father did, how his father worshiped, how his father loved the Lord. He saw his father cry out to God. Do our children see us? Cry out to God. And serve him. Talking about God. My son Solomon, know the God of your father and serve him with a whole heart and a willing mind. There we go with the serve, right? Who are we supposed to serve? We're supposed to serve the Lord. Not ourselves. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands every intent of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will let you find him. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. That's Old Testament. You want to play with God? You want to come to church and just go through the motions, sing the songs, clap your hands, and walk out the same way? The Old Testament... You couldn't do that because God wouldn't let you get away with it. Right? Service. Serving God. 
serving our spouses, right? As an example, the woman that God gave you, that you asked for, your job is to serve her, to see, to seek, to find out what her needs might be, right? As we get older, our needs are changing, right? Sister Rita, you don't need a 10 speed anymore, do you? No. I don't need a 10 speed, right? I need a bike with a motor on it. I'm not pumping my legs no more. I'm gonna cram. Your job is to find out what he needs. It's your job. Service. My job is to find out what makes her smile. A pair of leather boots. Even though they were on sale at the Goodwill, but it makes her smile. I know her size. I know what she likes. Whether it's jewelry, whether it's a t-shirt, a skirt, a pair of pants, a pair of shoes. I know everything I need to know in order to serve her. I know that she don't like milk, even though I'm always offering it to her. It's a joke. Sometimes she doesn't laugh. And if she's not laughing, then you know what? I need to check myself. I need to make sure that I don't push that line of where funny has not become funny anymore. Yeah. What if you want to... It's the same thing as find out what, why she's hurting. There you go. I get no response though. What happens if you don't get a response? If you don't get a response, brother, it don't mean you, you're supposed to stop trying. I mean, do we stop loving our children just because they don't call us? No. Do we? Why do we do that to our spouses then? Right? Our children could be the worst children in the world, but who do they belong to? Us. And we still love them. But the Bible says that children are a gift from God. You asked for that man. That man asked for you. I really couldn't stand here. <laughs> no, this is when I first made. Okay. We all have that. But when you stood yeah. here, when you I stood know. in front of that minister, whether it was at Disneyland or Chuck E. Cheese, Okay, well, at the courthouse, the judge or the, the clerk. Right? But see, that's just it. You guys not only did it once, you guys did it twice. Oh my. So you guys not only asked for each other one time, you guys asked for each other twice. So that should be an open, okay, he's here to help you, heal you. And when he asks, don't shut down. Oh. Don't shut down. This is the man you prayed for, once again, not once, but twice, you prayed for him. This is the man that God gave you to help heal you, not fix you, help heal you. And by him asking you, asking you, how can I help you? How can I heal you? You might not say it in those words, but he's asking you, where are you hurt at? That's him showing love. That's him speaking love into you because he wants to heal you. But when you have your walls, your walls, you're not showing him love. You're not giving him love. You're just shutting him out. If you think you're protecting him, you're not. You're hurting him because he wants to help you. He wants you to be fixed. But for you to fix you, for you to fix you, how would he know how to pray for you if you don't answer his question. How? And all you guys are doing is going further and further and further and further. And guess who's seeing that? Guess who's seeing that? And guess what you're passing along to the generations? Here's what's, here's what's so funny is, is we're getting older. No, no, no. You right? are, I'm still fabulous. We're, we're, we're getting older. You are fabulous. Thank baby. you. You are fabulous. It might have been okay when you was 21 to say, I'm leaving. 
I, I could do this on my own. Maybe even at 30, 40, 50. But if you're still acting like that at 60, 70, I don't want to be a lonely individual. I don't. You're going to want somebody Character there. transformation. We have to learn not only serving God, serving one another, we have to learn. I got a scripture. We're going deeper into the into the into the Old Testament in the book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 25. Exodus 23, 25. But you the Bible says, it's talking to us. You, those that love the Lord, you shall serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water. Mm. If we want the Lord to bless everything that, that, that's beneficial for us, we need to serve him. I was still going to finish the verse. It says, and I will remove sickness from your midst. And this is what, what, what leads me to the point of we're getting older, we're getting sick. Things don't work like they used to anymore. And here we are with our attitudes and our, I can do this all by myself. Yes, sir. But we're maturing. As you say, getting older, we're also maturing. Maturing. We like, should be. Like a like a peach. We should be maturing. Oh, I'm, I'm maturing, <laughs> especially in the work in the works of God. Mm -hmm. And that's what we should be doing. Yes. Is maturing in in His Word. Yes. And in our as we get older, reading. Yes, we're maturing, but some people they're still in that immature mentality. Yeah. They're still in that. Child. Drinking drinking the milk instead of eating food. It's time to eat the food now. I'm not drinking milk no more. I'm 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 a grown woman. I, I'm maturing. Not only in my physical, but in my mentality and in my emotional and in my word. I should be maturing. I'm not a young Christian anymore. I haven't been do I'm not a baby Christian. I'm not. Whether I've been doing this for two months, two years, twenty years, I'm not that baby Christian anymore. I'm grown now. I'm reading. I'm eating is what I should be doing. But some people aren't doing that. They're not. They'd rather stay in that immaturity type of mentality, that immaturity type of Christian mentality of, I'm still a baby Christian. Mm, mm -mm. You've been sitting in that chair for far too long to be a baby Christian. It's easy to say that. It's easy. It's easy to, well, I haven't learned yet. Well, you know, I have a learning disorder. No, no, no. We're talking about a God who has the ability to do anything he wants. And you're putting him in a box mm. by saying, I don't know how to read. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. We're talking about an all-powerful there is nothing he can't do type of God. You shall serve the Lord. Here we go. Serving the Lord. So before, who do we used to serve? We didn't serve the Lord. We served our friends and we served our cousins and our, our, our comadres and our compadres. No, we had no problem doing it. We had no problem doing no it. Problem we were buying the biggest present and the most carne asada. And we had two 12 packs and two 24 packs. And, and we had the most. If we're going to do this, we're, we're doing it. We're doing it. To the fullest. To the fullest. And, 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 and now, we can't put forth that same effort towards each other or the Lord. Where are we at? Where are we at? But if we serve the Lord, this verse says, He's going to bless 
our bread and our water and will remove sicknesses from our midst. Babe, when I get arthritis in my back and my hip and my knee, I hope you're still there. I pray you're still there. I got you. Even if I'm not here, I'll still be here. We already <laughs> talked about that. If the Lord decides to take my wife home, we have an understanding. We and I. <laughs> yes, it is your daughter, so you'll be right there next to me on the same day. <laughs> Mary Jane's moving in. After your daughter, Mary Jane out of the house because you're uh, Mary's there. busy. My my Bible says in Exodus twenty three twenty five. Worship the Lord your God, uh -oh. and and His blessings will be on your food and your water. I will take away sickness from among you. Worship is a type of serving. Yep. Worship is a type of serving. Yep. Yeah. Wor Sir. That that's something that is is to me of yeah. I'm I'm going to worship my God because why wouldn't I want to serve? Him? Why wouldn't I want to been so good to He's us. done everything for He's us. So and like my husband good. said, take away sickness. Why did we put him in a box? He's the great I am. The great, the great I am. The one, and I love this, that, that ever since I first heard it, the one and only God that spoke and created all this. Created the oceans and the waters and the mountains and the hills and the roses and the bushes and the animals and the creation. He created all this. Why would he not remove and take away and help me to learn how to read better, how to understand better? He gives us tools to get into his word. Ever since our Bible study, that's the first thing I do is I listen to the chapters that we're supposed to read. I listen to it, and then I read it. Next day, I listen, and then I read. I listen, and then I read. I listen, and then I read. And if there's a word that I do not understand, thank, thank you, Jesus, for Google, for having that person open their mind. Google definition for, and I haven't looked up the word till I understand what that word is. I understand the definition, the meaning, the pronunciation, all that. So there is nothing that my God cannot do. He gives us everything to help us to understand, to pronounce, and to define the words that we need to define. So when we have that character transformation and we submit to the Lord, we submit to one another, we're serving God. And he wants us to serve him because we've served so many other things in our lives. When we compare what we did for other people, they didn't even appreciate it. And what we do for the Lord, is there a difference? Is it a good difference? Is it a bad difference? I got one more verse. I'm ready to go. Ephesians. What do you got? Oh, I was going to say, I got homework to assign. And then we'll be done. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 7. We're talking about service, Tim. We're talking about service. I brought up the fact that that when, when, when we were in the world, you know, oh, we're having a birthday party for, for, for my kid and he's two years old. There was more beer there at the two-year-old's party than anything. <laughs> right? Two-year-olds don't drink beer. But that's what, that's what was coming. So what does it say? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 7 says, With good will, that means with a good heart, don't just do it out of anger or out of spite. Obligation. With good will, render service as to the Lord and not to man. Serve wholeheartedly. There it is. As if you were serving the Lord, not people. 
I know everything, everything and anything I do, even when it comes to serving my husband, I'm serving my God. Yep. I'm not serving just my husband, I'm serving my God. Yep. Because this is who I prayed for and this is who God blessed in my life. So why am I just going to or not serve at all? Why? I'm not I'm not gonna do that. I'm when I do something, I'm gonna do it wholeheartedly. Once again, we did it in the past for other people. We did it in the past for the enemy. We did it in the past for the cousins, the families, the whatever. Yeah. We did it like that. So why would I want not do it wholeheartedly to my God, for, to my husband? Because these are the this is the person God put in my life. God is a person who has saved me time and time and time again. This is the God who did not sin for 33 years and stood up on that cross, got nailed up on that cross. Not only did he get nailed, but he got beaten, beaten, horribly beaten for my sins. He did that for me. So why would I not serve him wholeheartedly? I'm going to do everything for him wholeheartedly. Surrender, submit, and serve. We need each one of those in order to complete all of them. I don't think you could serve unless you submit and surrender yourself, right? Because service requires a little work, but if you haven't surrendered, you're probably the first one out the door in the car. You're not just kicking around. You're not waiting for pastor to ask for you to help. You're gone. Maybe there's not even a God bless you. Maybe there's not even a handshake. They just run out the door. I, I'm going to sit in the last row so I can be the first one out. Pastor, we need to block off those last rows. Make everybody sit closer and next to each other. Like each other. Maybe they'll start to like each other. You have homework to assign. Homer to sign. Don't only take my word for it. Pastor says it all the time. Do not take my word for it. Look up these words for yourself. Look up these words for yourself. Surrender. Submit. Serve. Look up those words. Find the scriptures for yourself. Not only do that, but then also, like my husband said, that you want to ask five people from your past how you were back before you started serving Christ? Ask them. Ask them. Have a heart to heart with your five, with your two, with your three, with your whatever many people you can find. How about your children? Your old oh, Jesus. Ask your children. Before I came to Christ, not or before I came to church. Because there's a two difference. There's a difference. Coming to Christ and coming to church. Everybody can come to church. That's one thing. Was when I gave my heart wholeheartedly to serve God. How was I? What type of person I was. Yes, pray before you ask them because be ready to hear what they're going to say. Not going to be the easiest thing to hear. It's not, but it's something we need to hear because I want to know. I want to know how I was 20, 30 years ago, how, how I was when I was 15 to I was 18 to how I am today. Pick your age. What I was when I was 15, how I was when I was 20, how I was when... You, it, it's up to you. Once again, pray to God and ask God, at, show me the ages I need to find. Write it in your notebooks. At age 25, please tell me how I was. At age 15, please tell me how I was. What kind of person was I, what, was I back then? What kind of, of mom I was? What kind of, of young lady or a woman I was? When I was this age, you knew me then. Tell me how I was. Tell me what kind of man I was. Tell me what kind of person I was. So I should know. Can I check this one, cross this one off? Because I'm not that person anymore. I don't have that character trait anymore. Because I submitted it and surrendered to God. Ask your people. So then that way you know what to surrender. Come, come Saturday, come Sunday, come when next time we meet up. You know which one you need to work on and which ones you can cross off. So do that. Find your people. Pray, God, lead me to the person I need to ask that I can sit down and have this heart to heart so they can let me know what type of person I was back from this age, this age, and this age. Pick three ages. Pick two ages. 
your kids might not know where you were uh, as a teenager, right? But they might have heard stories, mm -hmm. right? Maybe you have a cousin, maybe you have a uh, family or something that you can talk to. Who knows? Maybe. Pastor, what do you got for us, Pastor? Well, we have a couple of prayer requests. Uh, of course, uh, we're always praying for Sister Rosie and her son, Manny, that the Lord would give them all the peace and comfort that they need. Elisa's not only asking for her family like she always does, her mom, uh, the Moreno family, her sisters, uh, Sumiko and Melinda, her brother-in-law, Reyes, her uh, Liz and Aiden, her um, military nephews, uh, Robert, Joshua, Stephen, and Christian, that God would be with each and every one of them. She's also asking for Sister Martha Dominguez. Martha uh, cut her leg uh, somehow. She cut her leg, and now uh, she, she can barely move. She's got her arm that doesn't is not uh, functioning right, and her leg now that is is up uh, and she can't walk on that either so we're going to pray for sister marty that god would would be with them at all times and and we're going to pray for our back to school which is uh next sunday august the 6th that god would just be with us in every area there i'm going to see if i can put up this little flyer here oh no i can't see it uh, sunday Sunday, August, oh, oh, right there, right there, Eric. Right there. there we go. A backpack school giveaway. We'll have games and food August the 6th at uh, Sunday, 1230 to 230 here at the church at Buen Pastor. If you have children, uh, bring them. Amen. They have to be present in order to get. We don't send anything out. All children must be present. So thank you for that. If you know anybody else or anybody in the area, those that are out of town, uh, send them our way August the 6th. Thank you. So let's pray for these needs that the Lord will continue to minister to us. Brother Dan. And uh, could you pray for my son that uh, the Lord would send uh, Sometimes it's up to us, Brother Dan. We can agree together. You know how to pray. I know how to pray. We can agree together. His legs. So please don't leave me alone as I pray and we go to the Lord for each and every one of these prayers. We already know that the, that the Lord's already heard the prayers and He's already working on behalf of the of, of his people, of, of those that are that are seeking the Lord for for prayer, but it is an honor and it's a blessing for people to ask this church and this body to pray, and that's what we're gonna do. Amen. I have a prayer report. Um, my sister's walking. Amen. Amen. I talked to her the other day and I asked her how she was doing and she said that she's walking. Now, she's walking with a walker, but I go, good, you know, it is, but you're walking. You know, and thank God, you know, and we've been praying for you there at my church. So don't tell her to thank you. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. Alida also, sorry, Lita, uh, I did write it down, a prayer for uh, for Lisa. She wants prayer. Alita wants prayer for her daughter, Lisa. Lisa's overworked, and Lisa does a lot, and Alita sees her and what she goes through every every day and things that she has to get done, and, and uh, uh, Lisa, we'll just leave it at that. We won't tell people how stubborn things go, <laughs> but let's pray for Lisa. You know, here's a mom now praying for her daughter. Don't leave me alone, Father. We just thank you, Lord, because number one, Lord, you you love us, Lord. You 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 continue to to pour into our lives, Lord, as we can as we learn and we start pouring into each other, Heavenly Father. But but right now, Lord, we're gonna we're gonna come to you with some prayer petitions, Lord. You're awesome. You're our alpha. You're our omega. You are able to do all things, Father. Earlier we were talking about you are a God of no limits. Right. 
You do not have no limits. You are all powerful. Mm -hmm. You are all knowing. You are everywhere at the same time, Father. There is no distance too far for you, Lord. And you still dispatch your angels from point A to point B, Father. You still send your covering, Father. You're that awesome that you can cover me here and someone over there, Heavenly Father. So we continue to uplift Sister Rosie, Heavenly Father. Strengthen that mother. Pour into that mother, Lord Jesus. I speak to her spirit, Lord, that you would start to work and build her up. Father, she has to keep a smile on her face. And I know inside she's going through it. Father, I pray that her mind would be safe, Lord, that she would keep that helmet of salvation on, Lord, Lord Jesus, so that way the wheels aren't turning and spinning, Heavenly Father, in the wrong direction, Lord, and we uplift Manny, Lord, that you would continue to cover him, Lord, that you would continue your work in his life, Lord Jesus, that he would continue also, Father, to look to you for strength, Lord Jesus. We want to always remember Sister Rosie and her son, Father. And we have Sister Lisa. She's always asking for her mother. And this time her mother's asking for her father because the, the daughter knows the mother. And now the mother knows the daughter, Lord Jesus. We're so intimate one with another, Lord Jesus. And I pray for a hedge of protection around that home, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would post your angels, Lord, in the north, in the south, the east, and the west, Lord Jesus. That you would cover them, Lord Jesus. That hedge of protection around them, Lord Jesus. That that which is there that is not supposed to be there, Father, remove it, Lord. Send it back to the pits of hell, Lord Jesus. Father, Lisa's asking for her family, for Samiko and her family, Lord Jesus. For her husband, Reyes, Father, that's always, Father, in need of, 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 of prayer, Lord Jesus. He's been battling some things throughout the last year, Father. And we ask that you would continue to, Father, strengthen that family, Lord Jesus. She's asking for, also for Liz, Father, and, 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 and Jose's family, Lord Jesus, that, that you would continue watching over that family, Lord Jesus, strengthening them because dealing with the loss, the loss of the Father, Heavenly Father, loss of a husband, Heavenly Father, it's not an easy <laughs> task. It's not an easy road, Lord. But you are there to sustain us to watch over us, Lord. We're asking for that, Heavenly Father. Lisa's asking for her military family, Lord Jesus. You know each and every one of them by name, Father. She's asking for her family, Father, for her cousins, Father, for, for her nephews, Heavenly Father. She's asking for Christian, for my son also, Heavenly Father. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would continue to deal, Heavenly Father, with each and every one on an individual basis, you quicken them. You strengthen them. You let them know, Father, by the work of the Holy Spirit, Lord, if they're not supposed to be somewhere, Lord, tell them it's time to leave, Heavenly Father. We give you permission, Lord, to let them know, Father. We give you permission to shake them up if you have to, Lord Jesus. We give you permission, Lord, to continue to love on them because we cannot. Let your arms embrace around each and every one of them, Father. May they rest their head knowing that somebody's praying for them, Lord Jesus. May they rest their head, Father, and have peace, Lord. The peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord Jesus. I give you honor and praise, Father. I thank you, Lord, because Brother Dan is asking for his son. Not for himself, Lord Jesus. He's asking for his son because right now it seems like it appears like nobody wants to help him with this situation, Lord. But you're at work in his life, Lord. Mom and dad have already asked you to be involved in his life, Lord. So I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would continue to work in Eddie's life, Lord. I continue to ask, Lord Jesus, that you would strengthen him, Heavenly Father. That you would bring to remembrance those things, the good things that happened in the past, Lord. Because, yes, sometimes... As children, we remember the bad, Lord Jesus. The good just goes through one ear and out the other, and the bad just seems to sit there, and it's uneasy, and it's festering in our life, Lord Jesus. So we speak, Heavenly Father, to Eddie's spirit, that he would continue, Lord, to do good, Heavenly Father. Sister Rita's prayer, I know it. Sister Brother Dan's prayer, I know it, Lord Jesus. It's for their children, Lord Jesus. 
and we're remembering Eddie and what needs to happen in his legs, Lord. You clean them out. You help them. You are the doctor of all doctors. You're the one that wonderfully and fearfully made him, Lord Jesus. You know what needs to be put back into the right working order, Lord. And we give you that authority today, Heavenly Father. We're praying for our back to school program, Lord, because this church here likes to help. And they like to help the community. They like to help loved ones. They like to help families. They like to help people that are that are in bereavement, that have lost loved ones, Heavenly Father. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would send people, Father, that, that need, Father. Send people that need somebody to talk to. And I want to prepare, Lord. I ask that you would prepare us here, Father, to receive them, Lord. That we would have that word, Heavenly Father, to give to those people. That word of peace, that word of understanding, Lord Jesus, that we will be able to give to those individuals that come looking not for a backpack, Lord. Maybe there's a void in their life, Heavenly Father, that we have the words to pour into their life, to fill that void, Father. I pray for us here, the believers, the body of Christ here in the Buen Pastor, that we would be here ready to serve, ready to, to surrender, ready to be of service, Heavenly Father. So I thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray for the food. I pray for the backpack. I pray that there would be over an abundance, Father, what is needed. And, Father, everybody would have a beautiful time at this event. Because in the root of what is being done, we are trying to impact the lives of those that need to know Christ. So we love you. We thank you, Lord. This time that we've spent here, we went over time, Lord Jesus. I blame that on my wife. No, I don't blame it on my wife. Yeah. Father, we had a good time here talking about you and, 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 and what we need to do in order to serve you and to surrender to you and to serve and to submit to you, Father, and to one another, Lord. Continue to work on us, Father, and help us with our homework, Father. It might be an eye-opening experience getting to know what people used to think about us. Jesus said, what do people say about me? Who do they say I am? Some said they were John the Baptist. Others said Isaiah or Jeremiah or a prophet of old. Who do people say Tommy is or was? What are they saying? What did they say and what are they saying now? Lord, give us the strength to accept some of those things yes. that we might not be ready to receive. Yes, Lord. Those things that we've turned a blind eye to. Those things that we've closed our ears to. Nah, 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 la, 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 I don't want to hear that. No, we have to hear it. That's the way we were. We we cannot get we cannot get to the kingdom of heaven when we keep that stuff in our life. We gotta get rid of it. So Father, I just thank you for this time and I love you and I give you praise. And I know you're gonna be with us, even though we dismiss from the service. You're gonna be with us. Be with those watching online, Father. Father, bless them. Pour out abundance into their lives, Father. You're going to bless each and every part of our lives. It says our bread and our water, Father. Everything that sustains us, Father, you're going to bless it, Father. And I love you and I thank you, Father. I give you praise. And in Jesus' mighty name, I say amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. Thank you, guys. God bless amen. you guys. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm trying. It's okay. What happened? Finish. I'm sorry. Oh.